Look at my shiny. 30 of Thorns by Margaret Rogerson. I have to say that I completely love this book. It's amazing. It's even better than what I was expecting. We're going to be following this main character called Elizabeth. She has been raised inside the library. And since very little, since she was very little, she has been in constant contact with books. She has read them. She loves knowledge. She loves, uh, you know, walking through the library and seeing all those books. And the best thing of all is that she's training to be a warden. And you're thinking, why does a library need a warden? Well, because some of the books inside the library are alive. <laughs> and that's amazing. They're grimoires. They have spells inside of them. And all the people that work in the library, to some extent, have been raised and educated to think that sorcery, sorcerers, wizards, and all of that, and magic is evil. So we have this main character that has this, you know, this way of thinking. And since the very beginning, she's going to be finding herself in company of a sorcerer called Nathaniel. And I love how at the beginning she has all these misconceptions, all these lies that she has been told about sorcery, sorcerers and about magic and about things and how she thinks that's evil. And I love how the how, how, how we have these two characters who they are interacting. You have Nathaniel, he knows that magic can be whatever you want it to be. If you are a bad person, you're going to use it for bad deeds. But if you are a good one, you're going to try to, you know, to, to do good with it. And he knows that Elizabeth has this prejudiced way of seeing the world. But I love how, how from the very beginning of the book, Elizabeth is willing to open her mind to defy everything that has been taught to her and think for herself and see. And I love how, how she began to put doubts in everything that she has been told so far about magic and everything. And I love how she lets go of those ideas, you know, because she began to think that those were all ways of thinking, prejudiced ways of thinking. And she wants to to, to discover more. And I love that there's some po points in the book where she says that she has discovered that the world is bigger than she thought at the beginning. And that's amazing. But I'm getting ahead of myself. So we have this girl here who wants to be a warden and something horrible happens in her library. And she is being accused of having said one of the Grimoires free. So she's going to be sent to be interrogated about the things that she did and during all this travel she's going to be a company in the company of Nathaniel as I was saying that sorcerer and he also has his own demon because sorcerers uh, made this kind of pact with demons and uh, in exchange for the power that the demon gave them they give them back uh, some years of their own life so uh, for me, it was amazing to see the interactuation of all these three characters. I love how Margaret depicted uh, the character of Silas. Silas is, is the demon. I love how, despite being more or less human in form, the, the author never tried to picture him as a good person. Uh, Silas never tries to hide himself saying that he is a good person and that he's going to do good or he says I'm a demon I can be very dangerous I have a lot of power and you better take care of how you deal with me but in the same in the same way he's also an amazing character because he has lots of layers to himself and I did love uh, what the author made with Silas I have to think I think it's one of my my favorite character on this book because I love how far he comes from where he was to where he is now and how it, it all ends. So, yeah, I'm not going to make any spoilers. And, yeah, as I say, there's lots of things about this book. I'm not going to be telling you much because I think it's amazing the world building that the author made. I love how the liberties work. I love this idea of having living books, you know, that can be dangerous. And this idea of having them in prison, in chains. It makes you think about... All these private books, all these books that that were like you you don't have to read this one, and all, those were the you know the books that went that wanted to prove the, that offer lots of knowledge and a lot of ideas and lines of thoughts that some people thought that were dangerous, and it made 
you know, this book makes you think about that. These books that are in chains that you cannot access to them because they are dangerous. And the, uh, the only thing that certain people fear is knowledge because they know that if you get this knowledge, you are going to want to change the world. And I love this idea of wanting to change the world. And I love to have this main character who's a female and she knows how to fight and she knows how to defend herself. And despite the fact that she is with two very powerful males, uh, she... She's the one that handles things. She's the one that takes decisions. She's the one that decides to do things. And I love how the two guys that go with her, uh, they never try to say, hey, let me do that. Or, you know, just take care because you're a woman. I love how they, 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 it's, they go with her and it's, they not pushing her down. They're pushing her up and they're helping her with everything that she wants. And I love but instead of coming and saying, hey, let me do that, they say, hey, do you need help? What do you want me to do? And I love that. And also I love that there is lots of things laying in this world as I, in this book. As I say, this idea of liberties as place of power, of enlightenment, of having these books that, you know, that some people want you to skip over them, but they are there and they're very unique and you have to open them and you have to dare to challenge everything that you have been taught these ideas i said that the world is a bigger place than you have been led to think i love this female empowerment i love this uh i think i say that this book it's like set in like some kind of victorian era uh, it made me think about that and you know the women that read a lot were thought that you know the brain the delicate feminine brain will get inflammated and then they will descend into hysterics and they will have to be sent away into mental hospitals in which they all will be mistreated. And I love how this book thinks, talks about it and says, no, the only thing women reading are doing to themselves is enlightening them and daring them to think that there is more to life to, than what they have been teach. And I love how these women in this book raise themselves to be, you know, better, to, to be free. And I love that sometimes in this book it says, okay, um, I have never had so little. I have never been without a home or without a place where I belong, but I'm free now. I love this idea of, you know, of being free, of owning yourself to yourself. And that's amazing. There is lots of things that I will say about this book and I'm feeling like I'm not making justice to it. It's uh, I love this idea, as I say, of women empowerment. Of uh, I love the role that liberties have in this book. They are one of the main characters of the, of the book. I love her books. I also have this very important role. And this book is like this ode to, to freedom, to wanting knowledge, to defy all these all ideas that we have been taught to defy prejudice, to defy misconception, to 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 dare to to learn, to want to expand your own world. It's amazing, and I have to say, the action never slows down. There is always something going on, and the characters are so fleshed out. They are so amazing. I love every one of them. I love how Elizabeth goes from being this girl who have always been told what she has to do and to think and to you know and I love how she finds herself in this situation in which she has to say okay all those things that you taught me they are not going to work I need to find my own way of doing things I need to learn to to see good and bad from my own person I need to expand my mind I need to learn I need to you know to judge a person by what is inside them not but you know, it's a sorcerer, it's evil, it's a demon, it's evil. Because she begins to realize very early on that sometimes human beings can be more dangerous than the ones that are called monsters. And that's a very, I think it's a very powerful thought. And I love Nathaniel. We have this sorcerer here who comes from an abused past. He has lots of scars inside his mind. And these scars are affecting who he is now. And I love how he begins to lose his own fears, how he begins to think that maybe it's worth it to be truly alive, not just, you know, going through the motions. And I love how he finds his match on Elizabeth, in, in Elizabeth and how they, you know, complement each other. And I love the relationship they struck. And I love how he wants to keep himself, you know, apart because he doesn't want to 
to change anything and uh, he's afraid of caring for someone, caring for something and having it to strip away because he has gone through so much. And I love the relationship, as I say, that the strokes between them. And as I say, Silas, uh, the demon, it's such an amazing character. I'm not going to say much about him, only that he's way better than we can imagine in the first pages. And I love how he has this duality in him that maybe he acts like a human and he cares but he also is a demon and he knows that he can be dangerous and he never fools anyone he never wants to sell this image or this image of himself he is always very clear about what he is and what it's real in himself and what it's not and i love that and yeah the plot is amazing there were lots of turns that i wasn't expecting and we might know who the bad guy is from very early on, but that for me didn't detract from the story. Uh, it, it was the contrary for me because I wanted to know, I was wondering what it's going, that person, what it's going to do now. Why is doing, how is doing that? Why, what's the end goal of that person? What What is he trying to accomplish? Why is he doing the things that he's doing? How is, is he doing the things that he's doing? And for me, he was a very interesting character in the way that he wasn't a bad guy because he was a bad guy but he was also misguided in his own intentions and there's what there was lots of things that in this book that I love a lot and I have to say that if you love books if you love libraries if you love this idea of, of women empowerment of having a female character that's an amazing lead and if you uh, as I do love uh, losing yourself in the pages of books this book it's going to speak to your soul Truly, pick it up. Thank you for watching. Bye.